the Gospel of John, chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 29 through 36. Now, let me warn you ahead of time, I'm going to read many scripture verses today. Uh, don't take what happened last week as the norm. Okay? I'm not going to let you go before 1230. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> 1220? You were looking at your time then. Eh? Okay. <laughs> All right. We're in here for a good time. Amen. I'm going to keep you as long as I can keep you. Until I see a few people do this and leave. Okay, uh, John chapter 1, verses 29 through 36, and then we're going to look at Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. The first one is John chapter 1, 29 through 36. If you there, say amen. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me. The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have sinned and I testify that this is the Son of God. Notice that the Son is capital S. The Son of God. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Amen? Amen. Have that in your mind as we go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 5. Beginning with verse 1. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and seal with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth, or under the earth, could open the scroll, or even look inside it. I wept, and wept, because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll, or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and the seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. 
he came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men for God. From every tribe and language and people and nation, you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God. And they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels. Listen. Numbering thousands upon thousands. And ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne. And the living creatures. And the elders. In a loud voice they sang. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. And when you get my notes, you're going to get other scripture references that we have. Because I want to talk about the Lamb. The Lamb of God. Because, you know, I have to understand why God has done so much for me and yet I am still a sinner. I have to understand why he keeps allowing me to preach. Even though I am unworthy to preach his word. I have to understand why he keeps allowing me to teach his word. His unadulterated word. Even though I am just a mere man. When I look at this passage, Revelation chapter 5, and I look at John and the ministry of John the baptizer, and I look at what he said in John, which we're going to get to later on, I ask myself, what does it really mean to be saved? What does it really mean to be saved? What does it mean to be saved? And what are some of the things that a person who is saved is going to hold on to and not let go? And every time I come to this passage, I say, aha, there is your answer. Worthy is that land. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. Now, I want to say something to you I want you to write down. You may not immediately understand it. But 
You need to know it as a Christian. So I want you to write it down. If, you know, don't, don't depend on the board there to give it to you. I, I want you to, I, and I don't even want you to show it, even though they have my notes. I don't want you to show it. I want people to write it down. Write it down with your hand so you can, you can remember. Because sometimes when we do things, we're able to remember when we did it, how we did it. And I want to give you a simple sentence, a simple sentence. And I will explain the sentence later. This is the sentence. Are you ready? Without proper Christology, without proper Christology, you cannot develop A sound soteriology. You cannot develop a sound soteriology. It's a very simple sentence. But I want you to hold on to it. You want me to spell soteriology? S O T E. R I O L O G Y. Soteriology. Okay. You need to get this because if you don't get it, you're going to miss my message. Our Christology must be. Solidly based on bibliology, in order for us to have great soteriology. There is absolutely no way that you can have soteriology without proper Christology. Now, let me put it in really simple language. If you don't really know Jesus, you ain't saved. Amen. Are you with me? I put it in the way I put it so it can be theologically correct. Before I use my Ebonics. Okay. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't understand Jesus, if you don't believe Jesus, you ain't saved. And you cannot be saved until you understand Jesus is the Lamb of God. Now it's really interesting that let's look at the two passages. We look at John chapter 1 verses 29 through 36 but before there was a John chapter 1 verses 29 through 36 there was a John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14. That provided the solid background for verses 29 through 36. Verses 1 through 14 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of man, and that light shines in darkness, and darkness will never overcome it. And it said, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, 
and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. If you miss that, you have no clue what 29 through 36 is talking about. Okay, because many of us, our view of Jesus is a Santa Claus man. And we use religious language. He's my doctor in the sick room. He's my lawyer in the courtroom. He's my blah, 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 blah. You don't know him. Jesus is not your spare tire. He didn't come to earth so you can get well. He didn't come to earth so you can win your case. You've got to understand who Jesus is. And if you don't understand who Jesus is, that is why I have problem with Muslims. I have problem with Jehovah Witnesses. I have problem with Mormons. I have problem with, you know, uh, uh, the unity faith of Christianity. And I can go on and on and on. The reason is we don't worship the same Jesus. And Muslims will tell you, uh, Jesus was a great prophet. They told you that lie when you were in the black Muslim. Did they tell you that? He was just one like that. Elijah Muhammad. He's one of the prophets. How can you say he's one of the prophets? And he says he is God. But then you don't accept that. And you just say, well, well, he was a good man. He was a good teacher. But he was just mistaken. When he said, I and the Father are one. When Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And he didn't correct him. See, that's where we have the first problem. And that's why I emphasize, I don't know if I did here or in, in uh, Pedaluma, that's why I emphasize that, notice that the S in son is capital. Amen. Man, you had your son. Where did he disappear to? Oh, okay, in the back. Oh, praise God. We're not talking about sonship and fatherhood in this way that we relate to our children. That's why the Bible uses capital every time it talks about Jesus as the Son of God. Unless if you're reading Jehovah Witnesses Bible. Because they already messed up. You have to understand who Jesus is. And let me tell you this. We're going to get to it later. And you know, you know, I have some time. That is why many of us cannot worship Jesus the way we ought to worship him. Because we don't know him. Amen. You don't know him. Let's look at the Revelation. Revelation chapter 5. Verses. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4 again. You're going to see me read this over and over and over again. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides. Let me give you the background to this. Where was John, the writer of of the book of Revelation when this came to him. It was on the island of Patmos. And what day was he there? The Lord's day. On the Lord's day, this revelation came to him from the Lord himself on the island of Patmos where no one else could disturb him. And the revelation came to him and told him of what was in heaven so that he could see what is soon to come. When you see a lot of people tell you this was Hitler, 
This was uh, President Reagan. This was uh, Bush. This was Obama or whatever. You, you need to just tell them to shut up. Because they don't know what they're talking about. This Bible didn't have America in mind when it was written. It didn't have Germany in mind. It was written to show what is soon to come and what is revealed by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. On the Lord's day, the Spirit revealed this to John and said, this is what is soon to come. And let's see in verse, uh, chapter 5, what is revealed to him. There, there are a lot of things that is going to be, uh, we're going to point out here. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll, but no one in heaven or on earth. Okay? No one in heaven or on earth. Muhammad wasn't found. Buddha with his big stomach was not found. Hello? Joseph Smith was nowhere to be found. Who is worthy to break the seal and open the scroll? But no one in heaven on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept why do you weep? Sorrow. No hope. Some crying could be for good, but in this case it was, it was sorrow and uh, hopelessness. Because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Listen, the lion of the tribe of Judah was not found in China. There's no tribe of Judah in China. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of what? David has triumphed and because of his victory because of his victory because of his overcoming because of his victorious resurrection he is able to open the book and to unseal the seven seals then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled, encircled by four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns. Seven horns. That tells you about the power of Jesus. Amen. Uh, do, do you understand what I'm talking about? When it talks about him, have, come, come up here, Matt. I'm going, I'm going to use you. Here. I was going to call Orrin, but that was already obvious. So uh, he's he's big man. Huh? <laughs> By the way, he traveled to Africa with me when he was like this. I could look at his head then, huh? Now he's looking at my bald head. Okay. Now, uh, man, I want to fight you. Come on, turn, turn around. Uh, you ready to fight? Hey, okay. Now, now you all listen. Listen. We're getting ready to fight. Now, he probably will whoop me with just two hands. Right? Immediately we're getting ready to uh, fight it out. He noticed I have eight hands. Whoa, oh Lord. <laughs> okay? 
Uh, you can hit this too, but you can't hit the others. Uh, have you ever seen animals? Have you ever seen rams fight? When you see a ram, when you see a lamb, they have only two horns. That is their power. That is the power of the animal, the horn. But the power of Jesus is explained to us as being infinite. Hey. Thank you, you can go back because I'm going to whoop you with eight. <laughs> But Jesus has better than eight. He has seven. Seven is better than eight. In Hebrew numerology, seven stands for infinity and completion. There is no power on earth. No power like the power of Jesus. I don't care what you're going through. If you trust in the power of Jesus, he will overcome depression. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just I'm just stupid enough to believe that. Because he's done it over and over and over. Some of us depend on pills. The power of Jesus will get you out and won't mess your inside up. Saw him with seven horns. That's not that's not the only place where he didn't stop there. How much time do I have? And seven eyes. Amen. Some of you think I don't see what you're doing sometimes. <laughs> Amen. And I only have two. I walk by there and they think I don't see them no more. You're probably right. But there is absolutely nothing that is going on, whether it be in heaven, on earth, under the sea, around the mountains, in the mountains, where Jesus Christ does not see. Because he is omniscient, he is omnipotent, he is omnipresent. Man, I wish I had time. The, the lamb, the lamb is not just the, the lamb of God, but he is the sacrificial lamb of God. In the Old Testament, they have the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant contained the laws that God told his people not to break. And one time a year, the, the high priest will go into the Holy of Holies. And they will bring back the lamb. And they will kill the lamb. And they will sprinkle the blood of the lamb on the ark of the covenant. To cover the sins that the people have made. And once a year they do that. And they have to come back again to do it again. With the blood of the lamb that was not perfect. But one time Jesus did it on the cross. And he did it one time. And one time only. And forevermore he sacrifice for you and for me lives forever. It doesn't have to be done again. It is done one time and it is complete. And that is why you know what? I want my wife to come up here. I didn't have her in Petaluma so I couldn't do it in Petaluma. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I have done weddings for 35 years. And I didn't do mine. Her father did it. And, uh, and it's really amazing. All these people that say they're reserved and everything. I have never seen anybody all the years I've been doing weddings, 35 years, and at least, well, 36 years actually, and at least once or twice a year. For the 36 years. There's some years that we have five and, you know, six or some ridiculous number. And there's some years where I only have one. I have never seen anybody come before me and I say, you may kiss the bride. And they say, I'm so reserved. <laughs> you kiss the bride. Mm. Oh, now, 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 you know, you know something when that, that was quick. <laughs> but but you <laughs> but you 
usually when I say kiss the bride, sometimes I have to blush myself. <laughs> because I say, hey, can you guys wait? <laughs> you know, but all these people are reserved and everything. If, if you know Jesus, you can't be reserved. When it's time to worship him, you're crazy. You're crazy. This is the lamb that was slain for you. This is the one that won the victory for you. This is the one that went to Calvary for you. This is the one that was in the tomb for you. This is the one that stayed in the tomb for three days for you. This is the one that got up for your victory. This is the one that is at the right of God interceding for you every single second, every single day ministering to you. Why are you going to be reserved? Give him the glory and praise him. Oh, man. Hallelujah. And you look at it, it's really clear. It's very clear. There, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I want to say this. What you think of Christ determines the authenticity of your faith. What you think of Jesus. Amen. What you think of Jesus determines the authenticity of your faith. It's what tells you whether you're real or you're fake. What do you think of him? Is he the Lord of your life? Is he the King of Kings? Is he the Lord of Lords? Now don't say yes too fast. Okay? I, because I truly believe this. Now, some of you may start living now. I believe that he is the, if he is the king of kings and the lord of lords of my life, and of my life, and what the reason why I come here on Sunday is not just to see a bald head man preach to me. The reason why I come here is because of him. Yes. I'm not going to come here and just look that somebody stole my rice. I'm going to come here and I'm going to let all go. I'm going to worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm going to raise my hand. I'm going to dance for him. I'm going to shout for him. I don't care what the other person beside me is saying. When they say kiss your bride. You don't look around. I wonder who's going to watch us. Amen. You can get another one. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what it's about is not being ashamed of the one you stand for, of the one you love, of the one you adore, of the one you praise. Those who really know him want to worship him. Look, look, look in here. Look, it's, it's really, I don't have to, you, you know, you, you saw it all. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints and they sang a new... That's, that's what worship is. Amen? So some of you go out and say, well, we were not... We didn't really worship to you. Probably because you didn't worship. It's probably because you didn't worship. You were standing there looking at who's going who's gonna to dance today. I want to see a show. But listen here, it said, and they sang a new song. He didn't say some of them sang. He said, they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its earth because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nations. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God. And they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels. Woo! I tell I tell you something. Well, one day we went to uh, uh, Vallejo Church, Vallejo Friendship Baptist Church. We used to have a choir then. Uh, some of you may remember. Some of you may have forgotten. But we went to Pastor Doctor Broadfoot was the pastor then. 
And he had invited our church to come and to come and, and to sing. And guess what? That day, I don't think we had more than 15 or 12 in our choir. And uh, if you went to Friendship Baptist, uh, yes, I, I know you know that because your, your, your family was there too. If you, if you remember at that church, they had a real big choir. They had a real big choir. And I was sitting there, and I was sweating. <laughs> I said, now here we are with 12 people. I don't, I'm not even sure if we, were, we had 12. They had in that choir about 100 people singing. And then it was time for Village Baptist Church. And they said, I said to myself, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I knew we were good. But we were not a hundred good. Now, I'm going to tell you this. There may have been one or two. I know my wife was there. But I can't remember who else was here. I, I, I can tell Dick and Allen was, was there. I can tell you this without any shadow of a doubt. The angels joined our choir that day. The angels joined our choir. And we put a hundred member choir to shame. Not because of what we were able to do. But what of what God was able to do with the choir that day? And and I stood up, I said, I'm the pastor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if you worship God, you don't need no chair leaders. You don't need people around you. You just worship God and see the angels join you and the elders will join you and the thousands and thousands of the elders will join you. Hallelujah. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my... I'm getting ready to close. Jesus said, I am the vine. And you are the branches. If anyone believes in, lives in me. And I in him. He it is that does what? Bears much fruit. Apart from me you can do what? Do nothing. To the Jews that believed in him. Jesus said. If you remain in my word. Then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall do what? Know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. When you are in the Lord. You don't need anybody to come drag you to Sunday school. Woo! When you're in the Lord, you don't need the pastor to beg you to go to cell group. Oh, when you know the lamb is being discussed and the word is being discussed, you want to be there. Amen. Some of you will accept the invitation to go boogie because you come to church. Amen. Amen. If I want to trick you, right, send you an invitation. Come to Sassolito. We're going to dance all night. Amen. We're going to sit Teddy Pendergrass. Teddy Pendergrass. You know, uh, we're going to sing his song even though he's dead. Amen. Amen. I, and and the reason why I mentioned Teddy Pendergrass is I can't tell you amazing grace, you won't show up. Ooh, yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. And you know what? We have some people that are so reserved in church, they can't dance, but you go to the disco hall. The Bible says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God had before ordained. Hallelujah. God ordained me to dance. God ordained me to shout. God ordained me to worship him, to glorify him. Like the angels, God said, when I want it, I can bow down. Hallelujah. I can get up and praise him. To the glory of the almighty God. I will sing for him. I will dance for him. I will raise my hand for him. I will clap for him. 
for he is king. He is king. He is Lord. He is Lord in it. I will praise him forever. Hallelujah. He is the powerful lamb. He is the victorious lamb. He is the everlasting lamb. Yes, he is sacrifice. He is the savior. And he is the sovereign king. Do you want him? Do you want him? Do you want him? He said he will come to you. If you just come to him. He will accept you. If you come to him. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.